Okay, so now I'm finding places to build in-betweens to make it a more satisfying animation. Here you can see my first nine keyframes now, and now they read as though they're all the same at the top. It starts to get colder in the middle. It gets really cold by the end. And this is a perfectly fine assignment, except that there's just so little movement. And so basically this is my main transformation, right? But for the animation to reset, I then introduce the sun and I introduce the thawing out. So I want to, I think I want to add a one C as well, just a little bit more time in the sun waddling around before the weather gets bad. Or maybe, maybe I want a 4B instead. Yeah, I think I might try that. So I'm going to try to fit one in between here. Just so the ice doesn't come quite so quickly. And you can work on this kind of endlessly. So if I want to build the 4, I want to find my, my character assets that were there. And I rebuild the scene, not to match exactly, but to fit in between these two. So I think I've got the pose and the shadow. Let's see if I had ice building, I did in four. But not at 100%. It's like more at about 65. And my background is a lot cooler, as you can see. And I had a lot more atmosphere built up, including clouds in the sky. It's like set dressing. and atmosphere. Do I have ice crystals? I do, just a little bit. All right. So what I want to do is I want to move my character just a little bit for this new panel. So I'm going to duplicate the pose that's in four and just alter them a little to work in between four and five. Move the shadow slightly, puppet warp the character slightly. I don't want to work against what I have. So the head tilts back there. So I just want to maybe just play with the, the fin a little bit. <laughs> I accidentally made two anchors there. So I have to move them both. I think that will work. And that's just going to extend the time. So now I say file export as JPEG. And this will be 4B. So I'm just giving myself a little bit more time in these different parts of the animation.
I already have a 4B, so this is going to be 4A. So now it goes 4, 4A, 4B, 4C. But if I really want to extend the moments more, I can always do this. I can make a duplicate of some of my keyframes. So now I have one and then one copy, and I'm going to rename one copy to 1C. So now it goes this, this, back to this, then to this. And then same thing for 4 and 4A. Four I can make a duplicate of 4. Call this 4. So now it goes 4, 4A, four 4, back to 4, then 4B. 4C, 5, and so on. Now what's the next moment I want to extend? It's number 6, which I think is the, the height of the frozen. So what I'm going to do is turn all of those elements on. Come on. I don't know why the, the eyeballs sometimes don't react. Yeah, so that's the last pose. I gotta turn on the ice. And get the opacities up. Nice and strong. Remember, I liked those striations. So it's just knowing how to play with all of your assets. And where you want them. Really build your atmosphere. Building the crystals. And this is when the sky was at its most bleak. Before it was warming up a little bit and the clouds were really strong. See how close we are? Oh, that's a little warmer. Interesting. Let's warm that up. All those pinks coming from. Might just be how our process is as it saves, but we shall see. Come on. Oh, there it is. It's the difference in the atmosphere coloring. So I'm going to save this one now as a JPEG. And it's going to go after 6, so I'll save this as 6A. 
thank you guys for posting your your work as you are able to complete it whether it's your sketch or your animation All right, so I'm going to call this one. I just want to open my downloads. <laughs> nope. There we go. Bring this into my keyframes. But this will be 6A. And then I want to extend that moment even more by making a duplicate of number 6 and calling that 6b. So I've really extended beyond nine frames and I could keep going but I think this is this is reasonable for showing a transformation without wasting a lot of time. These animations really are not going to be any more than 10 seconds at most. Um, and to do 10 seconds you would need around 30 frames. So they're, they're short little examples. But let's go to gifmaker.me, which you can find right on the GIFs on the links page. And I'm going to upload those keyframes and do the animation test. Now with those added ones some of which were new in-betweens, and some of which are just doubling up existing frames with hopefully enough movement that it doesn't look awkward and choppy. But it's going to look a little awkward and choppy because it's a GIF animation. So I have 20. So basically this is going to be 20 frames that play continuously. I'm kind of curious about slowing it down a bit, a little bit. So having it two frames per second. So let's do 500 milliseconds. But I want it to be at 100% scale. Create the GIF animation. Waiting, waiting. I have my keyframes, but most importantly, I have my updated PSD file saved from PhotoP that allows me to create all the different keyframes. Okay, it's giving me the option now to download it. I download it. Hopefully this will be my final animation test. I'm going to drag it into my assignment 5 folder and call it SP21. So it's a GIF, which means it is limited to only 256 colors, but it can play within a browser with any, without any special extensions. It's 150 pixels per inch by 8 inches square. Yeah. So now I have a little bit more time in the sun and a little bit more time frozen. It looks good, Professor. I like it. Thank you. Now, if I was art directing this and said, okay, let's make it into a, a more satisfying sequence, I might say,